So you think it's time to install the roll cage in your race car. Well, the first thing you need to do is go to the rule book of the sanctioning body that's going to be governing the events you want to compete in and find out what they have to say about tubing, material, diameter, wall thickness, and things like that. And once you got that all figured out, then it's all about bends and ends. Dang it. Well, what do I mean by that, bends and ends? Well, by this time, you've probably got a design in mind. You may have even gotten so far as to actually determine the appropriate material that you need, and you got three or four 20-foot sticks of it laying on the floor of your shop. Well, there's a couple of people that are going to have an interest in what you do next. Number one, it's the sanctioning body that governs the events you want to compete in. In their rules, they have certain design parameters that you have to follow, otherwise you can't run. And one of those things is minimum bend radius that you use to form your parts. Now the reason for that is the tighter the or smaller the radius is, the less strength a bend has. So they have a minimum radius. Once you've determined that, then you can go to the other guy who has an interest in what you do, and that is the person that's going to be bending the components for your roll cage structure. And you need to determine that he's got the dies for his hydraulic bender that will bend at least that minimum radius. It can be a bigger radius, but it can't be smaller than that. So once you've got that all together, then it's time for you to start designing components. And where most people start, and I can't think of an exception to this, would be right here at the main hoop. What most people think of as the roll bar. So how do we go about designing our main hoop? Well, if you're the guy that's got scanning equipment and you set it in the middle of the car and you scan the interior and you've got access to the computer software that you can use to design roll cage components, which does exist, well, good for you. This part's going to be easy. However, most of us are going to have to go down to Walmart or an appliance retail outlet where they've got big things coming in uh, in large cardboard containers. Uh, and beg a few pieces of that stuff, which they're usually willing to part with. So you get it home, and what you do is you take the biggest piece and you start laying out the interior dimensions of the car. That would be the width at the bottom of the doors, the width at the middle of the doors, and the width at the top from the top of the door frame across to the same point on the other side. Then you take several measurements vertically, and what you then have is the envelope of the cabin of the vehicle where the main hoop is going to fit. What you can do then is you can start laying out your main hoop. And obviously it's got to fit within that. And your drawing has to be full size and the components have to be the same dimension as they're going to be in real life. We're using one and three quarter inch tubing. That dimension there is one three quarters of an inch all the way around. The bends have to be the radius of the bends that the uh, speed shop can put in it and so forth. Uh, you also can put in the transverse or lateral member that most uh, sanctioning bodies require. Uh, this, the position of which is determined largely by uh, where the shoulder harness is going to wrap around it. There's some specific dimensions for that. Also, there's a diagonal tube that is required which goes up above the driver's head in the event that the vehicle comes down in that corner there in a rollover it doesn't collapse. Uh, this is really all you need. What you do now is you, you put this in the trunk of your car and you take it down to the speed shop and then we get to work. 
Now before we take all of our steel tube, put it in the back of the truck, and haul it down to the speed shop to spend a lot of money having them bend the tubing, is there some way that we could maybe do this ourselves? Well, over the years I've heard people say that they have, and all of them have done it with a particular tool. And that is the Central Machinery 12-ton pipe bender, or the equivalent. So how does this thing work? Well, first of all, we got to talk about the parts. We've got the obvious thing right here, which is a 12-ton hydraulic bottle jack. And here's the ram on the end of it right here. We have a frame that this is located in. It's bolted to the bottom. We have dies of different sizes that fit on top of the ram. And as you jack on the ram, they move upward against the material that you're going to be bending. Here we have rollers. And I'm going to use this piece of nylon tubing or, pie, or uh, rod to demonstrate this. This is what the material is going to bear against as the ram pushes the bend into the tube. So these rotate as, and reduce friction as the material is being bent and moves upward. Okay? So, and then you got, of course, the jack handle. So how does this thing work? Well, first of all, we have to select the right die. And here's where we have to discuss the difference between pipe, which this is designed for, and tube, which is what we're going to use on a roll cage. Pipe is measured or sized according to its inside diameter because water goes through it, wires go through conduit, and that sort of thing. Tubing is used to build structures, and it's, uh, it's sized according to outside diameter. So what we need is we need a die that is going to fit as closely as possible our one and three quarter inch outside diameter tube. Well, this is as close as we get, and it's a bit of a problem because as you can see, it doesn't fit in here tight. There's about an eighth of an inch or so difference between the diameter of the tube and the diameter of the die. This is sized for one and a half inch ID pipe. So what's going to happen here? Well, we could bend this, but the problem is this tube, when you're pushing up against it, it's going to get flattened in order to fill that gap. And the rules say that it cannot be deformed in any way. The, tu the inside tu of the, uh, the tubing bend. So I think we got a problem here. I don't believe this is going to work for us. I, I'm not going to demonstrate this for a couple of reasons. First of all, I don't have a piece of one and three quarter inch DOM tube that's of the proper length to work in this thing. And the other thing is because of the fact that I doubt that it's going to actually produce a good bend for us, I'm going to return this thing tomorrow. It's perfectly good for what it's intended for, bending pipe or conduit. But for what we're going to do, build a rolled cage for a race car, that ain't going to work. Today we're at Northern Racing Products, Mike Beamish's shop, and we're going to bend some tubes for our roll cage for the XJ40 project. So let's go inside and see what's going on. talking two weeks from today okay so let's count on that uh, regarding uh, I have a question. Yes. so I know you cut the roof off of the XJS so yeah. you're doing that with this car I will never do that again okay that's just one <laughs> okay Mike has enlightened me as to the technique that you use to avoid <laughs> that really bad decision <laughs> I was a little surprised when you did it so. well it made the welding easy it made the closing yeah. the door is kind of tough. Yeah. <laughs> so no, that was that was a that was a bad day. But it worked okay. Sorry. What do you think? Another day in Well, you know, <laughs> most of us would say yeah, we agree with that. Don't breathe.
Now, once we got the main hoop back from Mike's shop at Northern Racing, we took the main hoop and we cut it to the appropriate length and tacked it in place on a temporary basis so we could determine that everything was good in terms of fit and we found that it was perfect. And what we need to do next is probably the most difficult job of a roll cage installation and that is the design and fitting of a tube that is going to run from the main hoop across the top of the frame of the side door and down the A-pillar and when it reaches a point right about here, straight down to the rocker. Some considerations that you need to think about when you're doing that is, first of all, you're going to have a driver sitting here, and his helmet's going to be right about here. And what you don't want is his helmet banging continually into the side of that, uh, of that tube as he corners and breaks and so forth. Plus, you have to have enough room to have foam padding on that tube to protect the driver's head. Um, the other thing to consider is that as you come down the A-pillar, you want it tucked in as tight as you can in order to keep it from impeding the vision of the driver out the front of the windshield. Also, when it reaches this point and turns down, you need to make sure that you've got enough clearance for the door. You need to be able to close the door, obviously. So if you remember from the video that we shot at Mike's shop, we made a mock-up of the main hoop. Now that may seem like kind of an expensive thing to do uh, when you could actually go ahead and just make, make the actual item, but the tubing that we used was welded seam tube and it's much cheaper and it's good to get that right before you actually go ahead and bend it out of DOM which is much more expensive material. There's also the understanding that we we're going to use that mock-up main hoop to cut it up and build a build a prototype for the for the sidebar just like you would a set of headers cut up the the mock-up main tube up into sections and put it back together again fitting it along the route that i just described and what we came up with is this now you can see that it follows the route that i described earlier and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use a strip of Gorilla Tape to hold this thing in place while I talk. By the way, if you don't have a roll of that for your shop, you really need to get a roll because it's amazing stuff. So this is where that bar needs to fit. Now you can see that this is made up of one, two, three, four, five, six sections, all out of that prototype mock-up main hoop that we did. You can see that it fits very tightly. There's probably a quarter of an inch gap between the tube itself and the top of the side window frame. You got a nice fit here against the main hoop. And it does have a bit of a gap, about a three quarters of an inch gap between the tube and the A-pillar. But we really needed that in order to be able to turn this corner and go down to the rocker and be able to get the door to close, which it does with about one eighth inch clearance, which will be more than enough clearance for us to actually put a side panel, an interior panel on this door. So the plan now is to take this prototype, this mock-up that we've made, and take it over to Mike's place, have him bend up one like this, and another one an exact mirror image, and install that on the other side. Getting kind of excited. Starting to look like a race car. So Mike, uh, can you tell me a little bit about your tools of the trade here? In particular, this big black thing that you've uh, that you've got laying in the middle of the bench here. Um, it's really nothing more than a fancy compass that allows us to calculate degrees. And on the opposite side of the degree is a uh, measuring system that tells us how much tubing is consumed in that amount of bend. So that would be this scale right here Correct. on the outside. So this is the protractor. Yeah. And this is the number of inches per and fractions of an it's, inch it's, it's for any given degrees. Okay. So that way you can pretty much get it right on the nose. Yeah. There's, uh, there's nothing worse than having nine dollar a foot tubing and making a pile yeah. of junk out of it. So. Yeah. Yeah. I can relate. Yeah. So, Been there. But in the same in the same respect though, we don't typically start with good tubing. We'll mock it up with something 
much less expensive for okay. us to make our mistakes with cheap stuff. Now, in our case right here, are you going to go with the expensive stuff right off the bat here? Being no, you've got a, no, so we're going to no. we're going to go. I'm not going to spend your money. <laughs> okay. I'm going to spend right. it in a different way. All righty, very good. Yeah. So, so all righty, well, let's get her done. Two degrees. Over the next few hours, we got most of the bends done that we needed to make our roll cage. But now the question was, all right, we got the bends out of the way. How do we put all this together? What about the ends? Well, that question will be answered on the next episode of the Camp Chaos Chronicles. So if you like these episodes and you want to see more, like us, subscribe, follow us on social media, and leave a comment down below to let us know what we can do to do what we do better. So we'll see you the next time on the Camp Chaos Chronicles.